Hi good, hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So have a quick look, look here at the US there. You can see we had a, a negative day there on Friday with a bearish engulfing pattern breaking below 18,112. Uh, just closing just on that 55 period SMA bouncing off around about the 18,000 level. And uh, overnight we had PMI data come out of China. Some of the lowest data since, uh, since 2008. Um, still on the right side of the 50% level, but it's just looking more likely that the Chinese will have to engage in some sort of uh, stimulus measure uh, at some point soon to prop up the economy. Uh, I think their uh, GDP has dropped to about 7%, which again is, uh, I think that's a 25 year, the slowest that the GDP has, has increased in 25 years, and um, way too many people using uh, the current uh, cheap money in China to uh, invest in the stock market apparently so there's a big massive bubble potentially over there and that could have a, a, a small impact or a big impact sorry on the rest of the other global markets and we've obviously got the Greece deal trying to get hammered out today uh, the threat this week as well and uh, most global uh, most other global markets are towards the bottom of the ranges right now so US there is managing to post a bit of a positive day but Nothing too exciting. So moving on to the UK 100, um, negative day there again on Friday, so bearish engulfing. Another negative uh, start to the day, uh, but away from Friday's session lows. So we're still quite close to that 21 and 55 period SMA. Maybe an ascending triangle formation, which would be a continuation pattern with a breakout towards the top end. Otherwise, a break of the trend line would open up and move much lower. Other technical indicators are pretty neutral, to be honest, and nothing else really to uh, cover right there. Japan 225, dollar yen is currently trading 124, was at 124 spot 30 um, earlier. You can see here from the candle, not quite as high as it has been, but, oh, well, sorry, this is uh, Japan 225, but uh, nevertheless, Japan 225 pushing on higher. Uh, Chinese stocks have managed to rebound after the 7% drop on Thursday, so they've had a decent uh, a decent start to the week today. And uh, Asian shares of Japan 25 have followed suit and moved up that little bit higher. So that might have been a little bit of profit taking right here. Move up to the top side for a rechallenge of 28.68. Moving on to dollar yen for a second, you can see here uh, the great move that we've had. 124.42 is that potential support level. There is a next one, but it's miles away. Should we choose to break out of 124.45? In fact, let me just quickly get my monthly chart up here for a second, because that's how far back you actually have to go to get the next significant level. And there it is. Oh, well, 129. Uh, so no so no massive major dramas there, uh, but that is a significantly far, far away potential resistance level should we get a technical breakout of 124.42. So then having a quick look at um, Cradle West Texas, uh, if we just quickly open that one up there just now, fantastic day there on Friday, a real push up to the upside, back up to 59.50. Um, Everything else kind of flattening out right now. It's sixty-four dollars is the next potential resistance. Should we get a little bit of extra momentum? Obviously, you've still got the tips of these candles right here, around about uh, sixty-one seventy-two. In fact, I could pretty much just take that one out for now because it looks like it's not really in play at all right now. Uh, and I'm going to reinstate the tips of these candles right here because that's what we really want to get through is sixty-one seventy-eight. Uh, I'd probably still say that uh, 57 is worth having on there. Other technical indicators are pretty neutral, and that's where we currently stand. So moving on to looking at gold, uh, the dollar isn't doing a huge amount at the moment. Still got lots of consolidation around 1186. We had, a, we had an attempt this morning on gold to break up a little bit higher after three doji formations uh, just on support. Um, this is a graveyard doji formation right now, should that one remain intact for the day. Obviously, we just started the, the session. Um, we've got two moving averages adding um, selling pressure. That should push it right back down. If we got another, if we got another candle look similar to this, this wouldn't be a good sign for gold in the short term. Um, because that shows that you know, even though we're much higher, that the bears basically took control of the session and were able to push this right back down again. Other technicals are neutral, with the MACD crossing the zero line is the only other negative connotation on there. Uh, if all of the fundamentals remain in play, i.e. Uh, interest rates rising in the US before anywhere else, then, then gold's gonna feel, feel the pain. So moving on to Euro dollar, bearish and government patterns so far today, but we only just started the session. Uh, big run on uh, Greek banks uh, on Thursday and Friday last week. Over 800 million euros was taken out of um, deposit banks on Greece on Thursday, and even more on Friday. Queues at the door apparently, uh, and that's 
not very good for um, for Greece going forward. So obviously a lack of confidence that a deal will be reached. They're still saying that a deal will be reached, but um, they've got until this week, I think. Uh, they've got until Friday to sort that out. So they really need something this week. If they don't really want to leave it to the very last day, incidentally, but that's probably what will end up happening. Bearish and golfing pattern just, just now. 55 period SMA bounce off. Uh, longer term potential support 10786 and potential resistance remains at 1 spot 11. And to finish up there with GBP USD, uh, this is a proper uh, break of this trend line now. Uh, we are getting a, a kind of, a, well, I'd like to say a shortening of the legs of these candles, but it is kind of curving down as we get closer to one spot for 185. That looks to be the next potential support level. Uh, if we're going to get any other rechallenge up to the upside. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look so great in the short term. Uh, certainly more, more negative than positive right there. And uh, as if this kind of pattern continues on and just, just curves and slopes down here, you maybe think that by mid June we might be um, we might be down here if the rate of acceleration remains constant, unless we less the macro data says otherwise. And that would give time for this 55 period SMA to catch up as well. And that could be uh, the springboard for any further move to the to the, to the top end, the so GBP get a bit of a boost from, from local macro data. So economic data wise today, uh, we've already had uh, Asian PMI, which uh, pretty much just came in uh, as, as expected. Um, this one here, that's, that didn't, uh, anything below 50 to contraction. So that's not so good. And uh, that's over in China. And then you've got uh, German uh, PMI, Eurozone PMI, and uh, UK PMI. These are all from, all from market. Uh, and then you've got German consumer price index. Uh, and US PMI, the ISM manufacturing data today. So a fair amount of inflation related data due today. And if we just fast forward on to Tuesday, we've got German unemployment and Eurozone CPI and PPI. Uh, and then Wednesday, um, HSPC PMI for China. Uh, that's obviously going to be expected to come in uh, closer to 52 and change. UK house prices so much PMI data coming out. We've got some more Eurozone and UK stuff, retail sales and uh, ATP private payrolls. So we've got non-farm payrolls coming up on Friday as well, trade balance and everything else. So um, Wednesday promises to have a, a fair, fairly large amount of data releases, but you know Tuesday and today are, aren't shrinking violence either in that instance. So as ever guys, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights probably later going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.